In this problem, we have three slender rods that are welded together and they're attached at A. Uh, rods AB and CD start off horizontal, meanwhile rod BC is at an angle theta uh, with respect to rod AB. We are asked to find the um, initial angular acceleration alpha of the system after it is let go from rest. So looking at this diagram, we can see that everything is pinned at A and it is rigidly attached. And we're going to get an alpha that's going to point in this direction for the whole system. Uh, now, um, the forces on this um, body are as follows. There's going to be a, a gravitational force downwards for each of the um, three um, slender rods. And then we have reaction forces at um, A. Okay, um, so this is M, A, B, G, M, B, C, G, uh, M, C, D, G. Okay, uh, so we're asked to find what this initial alpha is. Um, and as always, we're going to start with our free body diagram. So we're going to detach everything and redraw the whole system um, with our forces. Uh, so we have the first rod, second rod, and the third rod. And we have the gravitational force for each of these rods acting in the negative y direction. And it acts at the center of the rods because we're assuming a constant density. So again, this is M, A, B, G. This is M, B, C, G, and this is M, C, D, G. And then here we have our reaction forces, um, A, Y, and A, X. And our, again, our coordinate system is X along towards the right, Y in the vertical direction, and a positive rotation. Um, counterclockwise. Okay, uh, and for our kinetic diagram, we're going to draw in our alpha, which is our angular acceleration. Okay, so this is uh, the diagram. So now we can start uh, solve for alpha with our force balance and our moment balance. So if we do a force balance, all we get is um, we can get to the um, reaction forces at A, but we're not asked for these reaction forces, we're asked for alpha. The only way we can get alpha is with a sum of the moments. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to sum the moments. And to eliminate this uh, reaction force from our equation, since those are unknowns, we will simply take the sum of moments about A. Okay, so that will eliminate these forces because they don't have moment arms. So we're going to take the sum of moments um, about point A, and this is going to be equal to I alpha. And this I is specifically I about A. Okay, um, so uh, first of all, uh, let's calculate um, this I. So each of these three rods will have a different I about A. So we're going to calculate each separate and then we're going to superimpose and add them all together to find the total IA. Okay, so we're going to call this rod um, AB. So this is rod AB, this is rod BC, and this is rod CD. Okay, um, and so we're going to do each separately. So I of AB is going to be equal to 1 12th ML squared plus um, MD squared. Okay, so this is going to play for each of the rods, um, but L and D change. 
Okay, so all the rods have the same mass, two kilograms, but L is the length of the rod, while D, this is on um, the parallel axis portion, is to, since this here will give you, and it's one twelfth, sorry, um, this here will give you the um, I at the center of gravity, so at the center of the rod, but we need it to be at the end of the rod, or we're going to shift this um, I by a distance D. So for this case, we have to, for the first rod, AB, we have to shift it to the right by half a length. For rod BC, we have to shift it by this length. For rod CD, we have to shift it by that length. Okay, um, so this D here is the distance between the center of gravity of the rod um, to point A. Okay, L here is just the length of the rod. So um, let's do it for the first one. So we have 1 12th times 2 kilograms uh, times L squared, which is 1.5 meters squared, okay, plus uh, the mass, which is 2 kilograms again, times, here we have half the length, so 0 0.75 uh, meters squared, and this is because this 0 0.75 is half of this distance, because we're moving from here to point A, okay, uh, so that's I of AB um, at A. Okay, um, now let's do I of um, BC, again, with respect to A. Uh, so this is, again, 1 twelfth ML squared plus MD squared. And, again, we have the same mass because they all weigh 2 kilograms. But now this distance here and this length and distance are going to be different. So this here is one meter squared, plus mass is the same. Um, but now we have to do some trigonometry, because this length here is um, the distance between CG here to A. So if we redraw that triangle, we have this, which is 1.5 meters, and we have that, and we're interested in uh, this length over here. Okay, um, and we know this angle, this angle here is theta, which is 45 degrees. Okay, and then we also know that this here is 0 0.5 meters. Okay, and we are interested in finding this here, which is D. Okay, and um, if you... Um, Solve for D with um, basic trigonometry, you get that D is equal to 1.1997 1 uh, meters. Okay, so this is going to be 1.1997 1 meters squared. Okay, and then lastly we have I of CD, which is again follows the same formula, ML squared plus md squared, but we're going to have, again, different lengths. So here, the length of this rod here is 0 0.5 meters squared, plus same mass, but now we have an even more complex geometric problem. Uh, so for this, we know that this length here is 1.5 meters, um, then this goes down, and this is length 1, 45 degrees, and then it goes that way, 0 0.25 meters. And we need to find this distance here, which is D. Okay, so let me actually highlight in red which distance we're looking at. Okay. So again, we do some trigonometry. So um, the way uh, we solve for this is essentially we take 1.5 and we subtract this distance here. Um, and since we know this angle um, with cosine uh, and sine, uh, with uh, sine, we can find, or with cosine, we can find this length. So we take 1.5, subtract this length, and we're here. And we subtract another 0 0.25, and we get 
um, the ver the horizontal distance that this travels, and then um, the vertical distance is just the sine, and then we square the two and then square root the sum of the two squares to get d. Um, I'm not going to do it or else it would be too long, um, but it's simple trigonometry and this yields um, that d um, is going to be equal to 0 0.8. Let me move it a little bit. Uh, 0 0.8915. Okay, so 0 0.8915 meters squared. Okay, so again, it's the magnitude of this. So if you split it into the x and y component, you can find the two and then sum the squares. Pretty simple. Um, so once we get these three terms, we can solve for these each. And then we add them up and we get the total i a okay um so um i'm gonna do that i'm not gonna add it up i'm just gonna give you the final answer so i a is equal to i of a b plus i of b c plus i of c d which is equal to 11.27 um Five, eight kilograms meters squared. Okay, so this is I A. Now we back to our equation here. We have I A. Uh, we're trying to solve for alpha, so now we just need the sum of the moments. And so the way we sum our moments is we go back to our free body diagram and we lo look at all the moments caused by um, each um, gravitational force. We find that radius and we um, multiply the two to get um, the full sum of moments. So going back to the sum of moments about A is equal to I alpha I A alpha. Implementing it, we get, um, so I'm not going to write I A out yet. I'm going to start with the sum of moments. So we get um, that the force of the first, so the, I'm going to start from A B here. M A B G times the radius, which is half the length, 0 0.75 meters. And since this is going to get the whole system to rotate this way, it's counterclockwise, it's going to be positive, and again, half of the radius. Since this is all perpendicular, I can just divide 1.5 by 2, and that's why I get 0 0.75. Okay. Um, then I am going to do the next force, which is MBCG. And again, I add it because it twists everything clockwise, counterclockwise. M B C G, and this radius here is a bit more complex. Um, so this here is going to be um, the distance between here, this horizontal distance. Um, so again, what I would do is I take 1.5, which is this length, and then subtract this little uh, x component here, which you can simply get by taking the um, since we know this angle here. Um, we take the uh, cosine of this this angle times this length here, which is half of this whole length here, and we subtract it from this whole 1.5. Okay, so I'm going to write that in. 1.5 minus 0 0.5 cos of 45 degrees. Okay, um, so again, this would give you that distance, that uh, moment arm, from A to the location of BC, but it has to be this horizontal distance because this force is fully vertical. And then we are going to move on to the last force, which is MCDG. And I'm going to go on new line, MCDG. And again, this one will be uh, more complex because we have to get this radius, uh, this distance here. So between here and here, the horizontal distance. Okay, and so we're going to follow the same process. We're going to take this length, 
subtract this length, all right, subtract this length over here between here and here. Um, so that's again the cosine of 45 times this whole length here, which is one. And then we're gonna subtract to the right, to subtract this length here to half of this length um, uh, to get to this point here, so only half, okay? So this is why this is gonna be um, 1.5 minus um, 0 0.5 uh, cos, or sorry, not 0 0.5, this is going to be 1 uh, times cos of 45 degrees uh, minus 0 0.25. This is all in meters, okay? So remember, this is the one on the top, this is minus the full length, minus um, the full length between here and here, which is, so 1 is that, and it's close to 45 minus half of this length here. We get to that point there. Um, and um, then we can take this and equate it to I alpha. And so I A alpha, and we have I A here. It's just a number that we just solved for. Um, we also have G, um, and we have all of the masses. So here we can directly solve for this alpha term over here. So now I'm going to plug everything in and solve for the final answer. We have 2 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared times 0 0.75 meters plus 2 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared uh, times 1.5 meters minus 0 0.5 meters cos of 45 degrees uh, dot 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 um, plus 2 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared um, times 1.5 meters minus 1 meter of 45 degrees and a 0 0.25 meters is equal to um, 11.2758 uh, kilograms meters squared um, times alpha. And so solving for alpha, we get that alpha is equal to 4.24 radians per second squared.